Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I was, for the record, my name is Carla Garrick. Um, I was before this committee a week ago, so I'm not going to go through the entire song and dance again. Just for the record, I will say I was arrested on March 24th of last year and charged under the wiretapping statutes. Um, so I kind of feel like I'm the poster child for the bad apples at this stage. Um, you know, a lot of people have talked here today. I think perhaps the most important issue before us here is the question whether if you are on the job, you're on the record. And I don't think it's an unreasonable expectation to say to our public servants that when you are on the job, you are on the record. Um, Representative Balazaro had said, um, and I believe this is true, that uh, you know, recording your public servants is a way to keep honest people honest. I also think um, we should think about the fact that um, it tends to keep dishonest people honest, too. Well, Dennis Goddard. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I really appreciate your being attentive and patient, and I will therefore be lively and quick. <laughs> I think the danger in this legislation is that it spins too many constructions. It is very easy and fun, and because we're intelligent people and we're used to looking at legislation, we play the game of what if. And my son, who's now reading World Doll novels, recently came across the great line in the, in, in the line of Mr. Willy Wonka, what if my beard were made of green spinach? We have, unfortunately, lots of actual, real, concrete examples of problems in the current law, the current way things are. And really, I'm here to ask you, to plead with you, to please do something to fix the situation we're in now, specifically with respect to law enforcement. I fear that our state is getting a reputation for being the place where we don't have a few bad apples. The evidence that I have before us, the evidence that I'm seeing in the news, is we're the state where the incentives are lined up to make it real easy for the bad apples to institutionalize the bad behavior. And I don't think it's 10%. My personal opinion, it's a lot more than that because the incentives are lined up. Please give it back to the people the ability to record their public servants, their magistrates and officers, and at all times accountable to them, at least while they're on duty, at least while they're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that individual, at least in a place where they are already authorized to be, without the fear that the law that the police know so well that the average show does not will be used as a sword and not a shield to defend them. All right, Madam Chair. RSA 91A, our celebrated sunshine law, tells us that openness in the conduct of public business is essential to a democratic society. The, the purpose of this chapter is to ensure both the greatest possible public access to the actions, discussions, and records of all public bodies and their accountability to the people. And we know that transparency encourages good behavior. The chapter further specifies all meetings, whether held in person by means of telephone or electronic communication or in any other manner, shall be open to the public and that any person shall be permitted to use recording devices, including but not limited to tape recorders, cameras, videotape equipment, and such meetings. We can't be in every place at every time, yet we ask our government to act on our behalf, and so such recordings are used to provide an unbiased, durable, and objective record of our government's actions. In most cases of recording official interactions, the results are expected to be exceedingly dull. Everything <laughs> happens the way we should expect it should. The issue is not whether most public officials are bad, but whether the state provides that very small minority of those who would exhibit poor behavior a veil of secrecy to be used as a tool of tyranny. Such acts among police only serve to sully the reputations of their fellow officers and damage the reputation of the state government, which seemingly seeks to defeat the very transparency and accountability that can both correct and prevent such egregious violations of the public trust. An accountable government has no tolerance for such actions and offers them no harbor. Over the past year, with the proliferation of both awareness and technology, this issue has come to the fore on both a local and a national scale. 
while the New Hampshire legislature has been working its way through this issue for a number of years, a few prominent cases, not the least of which being the notorious Bart murder, have created a crescendo of support against state prosecution of recordings of this type because of the essential feed that feedback they provide to our system of government. Leading thinkers, analysts, and legal scholars from across America have concluded that both moral virtue and the march of progress demand an end to such prosecution. I ask you to support this bill and have provided references to several research pieces with my written testimony. Thank you for your consideration of this matter. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you. I have one question, which I wanted to ask all day long. I guess you became a victim of my... <laughs>